Hello to everyone, we are Hellenic Foxes and this is the second episode of our new series. Um, we want to welcome Benjamin Tafnell, the ambassador of King Power in Thailand. Hello Benjamin, how are you? I'm fine, nice to, nice to be here with you all. It's always nice to meet Leicester friends from everywhere in the world. Great, great supporters. It's an honor for us having you here today. I don't think... Sorry. Yeah, it's a great honor for us, uh, for me too, uh, to have you here with us. Uh, let's start with a quick uh, this or that section in order okay. that people get to know you better. All right. Uh, you have to answer fast, right? Okay. Whatever I'll, I'll comes to mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go. Thai food or burgers? Burgers. Mai Thai or volleyball? Mai Thai. Mendy or Chadri? Chadri. Thai women or European women? Thai women. Bangkok or London? London. Evans or Soyuncu? What's that? Oh, Yunsu. A pop or rock? Rock. Morgan or, B or Benkovic? Morgan. Nice. Perfect. Morgan, not Benkovic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it was... Uh, Nostalgia in there. Thai women, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought that European women might sound more beautiful, but you. No, no, I, I, I grew up. I grew up in the United States. So I've, I've had my fill of European women as well. So <laughs> it's okay. It's American okay. Women. Nice. Okay, so uh, let's proceed with the interview, uh, Theo. Yes. Um, Benjamin, when did you start supporting Leicester? Tell us about the fan club in Thailand. Um, everything. Everything about okay. your fan club. Where um, you gathered to watch the games. Okay, I started uh, started watching Leicester in the end of 2014. Um, it was very interesting in, in, in the way that the club was able to fight and not get relegated. And then shortly after that, there was some drama when uh, the club came to Thailand and there was mm. a problem. And uh, you know, so the manager got sacked immediately after that, which was tough. And then they put Ranieri in, and and you know, <laughs> a miracle happened. So um, it was um, about halfway through the, the season, the 2015 season. And uh, I took one of my songs and I dedicated it to, to, to Lester and uh, some people from King Power saw that and they sent it to Quintop and he liked it a lot and so they invited me to an event and um, started doing more things with, with the club. Um, they're, they're really great people, the, the, the company itself and uh, all the people involved with it, are, they're, they're very generous and very genuine people. So um, it, was, it was great to, to get to know. and. Um, as the years have passed, in the last four or five years, it went from a club that I just kind of watched into now it's probably the club of my heart because it's it's there's been so many things that, that, that have gone on in the club um, over these past four or five years that that have um, you know it made it kind of almost given their legendary status in, in a lot of ways. It, it's mm -hmm. a good football club needs to have a story like that to to kind of draw the supporters together, and there's been so many things, both good and bad, that. Um, you know, it, it makes the club quite special in a lot of ways. The way that the club um, actually retains the love that it receives from us is amazing. I think that no yeah, Premier yeah. League club does that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, we have the owners are fantastic, and and um, now since since the owners are tied, since they, they took, this is the tenth year since they took uh, took over the club, and the fan club grows year by year. But in Thailand, every everybody already has the, the club that they support usually before. Mm -hmm. They bought it, so Liverpool and Manchester United are, are massive clubs here uh, with huge support here. But uh, Leicester's aiming to be everybody's second club at least, and I didn't <laughs> have a club, so so um, you know, it was great for. for uh, this is perfect for the next question. Um, with a quick um, Google search, I saw that football is uh, almost the main sport in. Uh, yeah, Canada. yeah, the main, main sport by by yeah. far. Maybe Mai Tai um, was uh, very popular, but now football is number one. In, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's, uh, it's amazing. Thai people are crazy about football. We have, we have probably the best TV coverage anywhere in the world. Yeah. Like in every single league that you want to watch, you can let, watch live and many, many, many matches. So the Premier, Premier League, every every match, La Liga, every match, Calcio Serie every match. So it's, it's really football crazy. Uh, so country and, a Thailand football is not so popular, right? Everyone, everybody follows the Premier League. 
Well, yeah, everybody follows the Premier League, but the Thai League in the past uh, four or five years, they've put a lot of money into it and it's it started to come up. Uh, there's a few Thai internationals that are playing. Uh, one went to Spain to Al Almeria for a little while and then another uh, two or three now are in, in Japan in the J League. Uh, one won it last year at Yokohama. So mm -hmm. um, some, of the, some of the national players are branching out, at least in Asia. Uh, they have a little bit of disadvantage in terms of physicality and the size and, and, and things course, like that. Yeah. Which makes the jump to Europe a bit tough. But uh, the club actually has a program here called uh, Fox Hunt, where they mm -hmm. take 15 to 20 promising young players that haven't been signed yet and they move them to, to England. So they have, a, they have a separate facility in Leicester for the Thai academy and, 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 and the normal academy. Nice. So they've uh, invested quite a bit in that. And, and the thing is, is, none of those players are, are uh, obligated to sign with them or anything like that. So it's, it's, it's just a great opportunity. I've seen players that have been involved in that and they've grown a lot as players, but also as, as people. They go over there and they maybe come from a poor family here or something like that and they go and put them in a very nice school there and you know when i go to meet them and again they can speak english and it, it's 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 really amazing they, they give amazing. an education and, and, a, and a life and with with they don't ask for anything in return so. we knew that mr vitai had um had done a lot you know like he's um people love him so much uh yeah. but we didn't know this this little um things that you told us. Uh, so, yeah. is, is, uh, is Leicester uh, more popular because of because of the owners? Yes, it's, it's definitely more popular. Thai people are quite nationalistic and um, when somebody does something well from Thailand or, mm -hmm. or you know, does, takes over an international brand like that, uh, there's a lot of interest in it. And because he was so well loved and um, the way they do business here, it, it's you know, the company King Power is like a family. so. There's, there's, you know, they have several hundred employees, and it's, um, they, everybody's treated very, very well, and so it's, it's, it's kind of a company that's been put up on a pedestal, and it's, it's a, an everyday brand. Uh, it's in all the airports yeah. and things like that. So it's amazing that everybody gets to uh, speaks about Mr. Vichai with great words, with, with, uh, like they, they laughed yeah. him, like they I knew. Mean, yeah, it was. I have a, still have a hard time talking about it because. I didn't know him very well. I met him many, many times, and he was always very, very um, open-hearted. Yeah, and and also very modest and very. I mean, he he didn't make you feel like you know he's the, the boss and you're talking to the boss. I, yeah. I saw him on you know, on the way to the bathroom and <laughs> just said hi, and he was a normal guy. And, um, I mean, it was a, it was a real, real tragedy. Um, uh, yeah. When he died, uh, like two questions. Um, when he died, was the the funeral like? something very important for Thailand? Was it like in a, in a city, so it was more about this city or it was about whole Thailand? Well, uh, throughout Thailand, people mourned. Um, they, kept, they kept the funeral. The funeral was a private funeral mm -hmm. ceremony, so, uh, but it, it's a Buddhist ceremony. So it lasts for about seven days first, mm -hmm. and then they, uh, they keep the body for another hundred days before they cremate it. So. Um, I was invited to the, the funeral for, uh, I went twice. I went the day that with the players, when the players came mm -hmm. and I actually sat in the row right behind the players. And then um, I went another time on my own. It, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, it's a sad event, but at the same time, you could see everybody had so much respect for him and, and that, that, you know, it was great, also great honor to him. It's, he has left well, a legacy. No, oh, absolutely. And he's a legend. I was yeah. in the parade um, one year after his death. There was okay. a parade uh, in the game against uh, Burnley, uh, okay. where I don't know, like twenty thousand people were there and yeah, yeah. started I mean, uh, all over the yeah, all across the things the that he's done for for Leicester, also the, the for the city. He donates, you know, donated a lot of money, and they still do. Mm -hmm. And the top is doing a great job in following up with what his father tried to, to achieve. And um, you know they donate a lot of money to hospitals and, and things like that. So they're they they're I mean Leicester is very very fortunate to have them as owners because they are the complete opposite of almost every owner in, in mm. football. They, I mean, finances are an issue and things like that, but they are really looking to build a project. And they I, and I think they intend to own the club until you know nobody in their family wants it anymore really. yeah that, 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 that was my next question do you think that mr top will stay uh, on the wheel of the team let's say 
um, yeah. for a yes. lot of years, right? I, their commitment is 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 very very firm. I think they're, you know, I don't think they have any intentions of of uh, of getting rid of the club at, at any point in the near future. And they've even expanded. They bought uh, Leuven in Belgium as well. So mm-hmm. that's we're kind of setting up a feeder club for the, the, the for for Leicester as well. Mm-hmm. And um, it's which they, they just got promoted to the, the first division in Belgium also. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday were the the good yeah. news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So no, I don't. I I don't think they're gonna. He's very young, also. And for me, it's it's um, he, he's doing what he he loves to do, and this is his his dream. I mean, they have other businesses and stuff, but if we asked him what he would want to do if he had to do one business, it's definitely this. And um, the attachment now that they have with the, the city and the club and the fans, everything is. I don't think they'll walk away from that anytime. In, in, Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, in, in a very very long time. <laughs> And Benjamin, it was a very difficult year for everyone, I think. So let us know how do you sum up this year? I, I mean, about Leicester. Oh, it's, uh, I mean, I think I think it was a great year anyway. Um, mm-hmm. There may be a, a twinge of regret that okay, we were in a position to play Champions League next year, but you know, this is for for a club that's developing and a club that has a project, a clear project with a name over a long term, not not a short term project. Um, these are the kind of things that happen. Okay, I think the reason why you, know, you can blame injuries and you know the, the break and things like that, but it also comes down to to a certain degree. Um, it, it, Leicester's a, a new club in, in these type of situations. You know, they haven't been in these high pressure situations at the end of the season when it really you know every every single point matters, and uh, they should take it as a lesson. But at the same time, if you had asked any fan, you know, in the beginning of the season, oh, we're going to fin. What if we finish fifth in Bolo Europa League? Every single, every single person said it's great. You know, that's that's a great result. So there's, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, I wouldn't even say regret really. I mean, I I understand the reasons why it happened, and uh, I kind of see it as a learning experience for the club, and it's it's a step that will prevent it, this from happening again in, in, mm-hmm. a, in another year. So are you happy with the fifth place Europa League next year? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm happy with it. Yes. Um, could they have done better? Yeah, but I mean, it, it comes down to to really really small details. I and mean, the the Watford match, I mean, that that's two points right there. That I mean, how many times that he's gonna he's gonna score if I score kick like that with you know, a <laughs> defender? It's not. I mean, it's, it's when it, when an equalizer like that happens, you just kind of it's it, you kind of got got accepted. And um, so they've been a little bit unlucky and a little bit inexperienced in, in that and. Of course, injuries and things in the ban at the end was where I think he was really bad as well. Mm-hmm. But it's, um, it's okay. What is your opinion about VAR? Are you against it? Uh, what do you think about? I it? I don't like VAR. Um, I think it it stops like the, the normal flow of the game. Okay, I understand. And yeah. certain certain it, it's actually kind of a point of perspective, right? Because if it's your club that gets VAR and you get a penalty, and okay, then it's great. But If it's your club that gets a penalty called against them because of yeah. VR, then then it's not so great. So, I think uh, you know football has been around for so long without VAR and and things like that. I think maybe if they could do goal line technology or something like that, that was uh, a little bit as a substitute for for that. I think, but I mean it's, it's here. It's something that probably is here to stay anyway. And um, I don't know. To me, it kind of takes away the flow of the game when when a goal is scored. You got to look and at the camera and see if you know. But it's coming back or anything like that, so it takes a little bit away from the fan experience as well. The players develop so much that uh, now they can run so fast that nobody can chase them. Like uh, yeah. the referees, nobody. So I guess yeah. this is why they have VAR, you know, to in order not to, in order to avoid any uh, bad calls, you know, like very bad calls that might yeah. happen. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I understand the reasons for it. It's just. I don't know. I, I I'm a bit older, so I, I maybe I like more traditional uh, the flow of the game. And yeah, it, for so long, you know, errors by the referee were, were were part of the game, and it's just something you had to overcome. And, um, I don't know. It, it it kind of I'm worried that it's it's gonna make it kind of like basketball is now compared to what basketball yeah. used to be, um, where it, where it's everything's not quite as intense and, and things like that. But but. We'll see. I mean, I think definitely in certain situations, it, it's for for it's Europa League um, for the qualification rounds. VAR won't be there. 
and even for the <laughs> first round of uh, when there's a, st- a stage in the group stages, yeah, yeah. groups. Yeah. Uh, so the first six uh, Leicester games won't will be without uh, VAR. Yeah, yeah. In Europa League. So let's see. I, I disagree. <laughs> I, I think it's necessary, but it's uh, you know it, it's not the right use. You know, it it, it it's maybe necessary, some- but. There are a lot of mistakes. And yeah. 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 There still there still are a lot of mistakes, which is. There are. Yeah. I don't know. It's 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 a tough thing to call. But I yeah, and for for really bad errors or for you know, you know, handballs or clear clear fouls in the box or something. Okay. It, it it's it's good and it's necessary. But um, I think just think it takes away a little bit away from from the game. I just believe that right now all the referees feel safe. You know, because if they make a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, they have they have some auto auto corrected, you know. Yeah, you have a TV, you have a screen. Now next yeah, game, they, I don't know, like if they're gonna be so nervous or not when they yeah. see a, someone jump, you know, like just to win a penalty or something. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, let's go to our uh, final question. Okay. This year uh, there were a lot of highlights: uh, Europa League qualification, of course, Vardy winning the Golden Boot. Yeah. Uh, even in Didi winning for the third consecutive year uh, the tackle section. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and also, last but not least, our huge record win with zero uh, nine away <laughs> at Southampton. Yeah. Um, do you keep one of these highlights as your favorite, or do you have another one? I would, say, I would say how... I would say Vardy winning the uh, the Golden Boot. Um, Okay, the qualification we, we didn't get to the Champions League, but for him to, to have that now as you know as part of his resume, and he didn't get it in the year that they won the championship, so uh, they won the title. So it's something that was maybe still missing from his his box, and it, it's nice. It's nice uh, recognition for for a player who gives everything he has for the club, and he's actually a very nice nice guy too. He's he's um, he always has times for the fans and stuff. I've met him on maybe three or four occasions now, and he's he's always happy to take a picture, to say hi, and talk for a minute. Or, you know, he's a very, very nice, down earth guy. I think you are the, the first person who tells me good stuff about, about Vardy. <laughs> 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 you, know, he, uh, you know, he's 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 a working class British person, but at the same time, he. He, uh, you know, I, I think he really does appreciate the fans. And, yeah, of course, of course. Um, I was kidding. I was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know him, Benjamin? Did you know Jamie Vardy? Uh, yeah, I mean, personal. Yeah, I've met him uh, maybe three or four times now. Um, after I started doing things with the club, they they took me to this. I was at the Champions League match uh, at home against Sevilla in the round of 16 when we won. Sevilla, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So we were training the day before, and then at the match, and then. Um, then when they came here for well for, for the funeral, I saw him again, and then I saw him in Hong Kong uh, before for the uh, the Asia Cup or something when they played Liverpool in the in the final of that uh, mm-hmm. two years ago. Um, and we were training then also again for for that. So uh, I was I was lucky enough when when they when the team came after they won the title, um, I I sang for them and they they had a VIP dinner with just the players and the staff and. And I sang a few songs for them, and then went and sat down with a bunch of the players and had drinks. And you know, they're they're really nice guys. I sat with Huus and Lua um, and uh, folks and mm-hmm. Shinji. Of course. And uh, yeah, I I ran into Shinji a few other times, and we look a little bit alike. So um, <laughs> we, sat, we we got on got on pretty well. And actually, when I was after the Champions League match, it's funny. Um, I went out. After to to a bar in, in Leicester, it's, a, it's called uh, Iron Cross, right on on the high street, and um, you know I had Okasaki shirts on, and, and everybody started <laughs> singing, and they put me up on their shoulders, <laughs> I'm like going up in this bar. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was great. And yeah, uh, Ella, again, and, who is or who was your favorite player? Um, favorite in terms of um, just that I, I got to interact with him quite a bit was probably Okasaki because I've seen him uh, several times. Um, but in terms of play, I would, I would, I'd probably have to say Kante. I think Kante is <laughs> okay. he's the one that got away. He was, he's, he's such a brilliant player and a brilliant 
guy that just you know he's he's very lovely. He was he was there the night of the Sydney Pacific match. Also, we ran into him um, uh, on the way out. So it was it was amazing though that that, that match. I was seated in the president president's box, maybe six seats down from top, and um, I mean the night that night had everything. There was you know penalty save and you know, a lot of this a red card and, and nice for you and it was uh it was just a brilliant match and um, yeah it kind of that kind of thing and then after um we tried his passing you know just seeing like the you know, the way that the way that the club all kind of came around each other and supported each other it's it's uh it's definitely a special club mm -hmm. special. um i just want to share a story with you uh the fr during my first visit at king power stadium it was um 2015 um I went to buy a shirt, you know, I wanted to, to print it also, drink water and the number four, yeah, yeah. my favorite player uh, at this moment. So in front of me was a guy, uh, I don't know, from China, from, from Asia possibly, uh, and he had ordered, sit down, 66 t-shirts <laughs> of, <laughs> of Leicester, replica kits, 66, oh. all of them with Okazaki 20. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all yeah, of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's no, probably Japanese. <laughs> nobody else printed any T-shirt that day. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the corner. I think I know who she. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every guy was occupied by him, you know, printing uh, yeah. Okazaki 20, Okazaki 20, and uh, I didn't get to print my T-shirt. I I went the other day on the morning and I finished in like uh, you know like uh, two minutes anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just take very long. Benjamin, thank you very, very much uh, yeah, for uh, letting us uh, do this interview. Uh, we got to know a lot of things about Thailand, about you, about Leicester also. Uh, thank you again very, very much. Uh, it was lovely having you here, Theo. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, I have no word to thank you. You are a very good guy. Uh, Adonis uh, sent you first and I didn't know that you can Uh, give us a small Some time of yeah, yeah. Of your time. yeah no, no problem. It's, 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 and uh, I was very happy when he told me that you know we have Benjamin today. You are very famous for us. Uh, thank and you, thank you very much. You seem like yeah, very, no. very, very, very wise, and uh, uh, you seem like a role model. You know, like um, uh, a guy with. Um, a decent guy that everybody wants to look like when he will be... Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. what I try, try to be. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. Come and visit us in Greece. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. We've got to wait for this whole mess to clear up. But, of course, but, of uh, course. I'm looking forward to, looking forward uh, to it. Stay healthy, you and your family and everyone that you love. Uh, yeah, keep you supporting uh, Lester. And thank you very much again. Okay, thank you very much, Benjamin. Goodbye. And you guys stay healthy also. Stay safe, wear a mask. It, will, it really works. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Benjamin. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye.